In 2014, in a remote area of the Siberian Arctic, scientists discovered a number of mysterious sinkholes, openings in the permafrost, Arctic soils that have, until recently, been permanently frozen to great depths. The mysterious openings were unlike any other features previously observed in the Arctic, emitting high levels of methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Evidence from the surrounding area indicated the craters were formed after a significant buildup of subsurface methane apparently ignited in an explosive blast. I spoke to scientists who are now piecing together what happened and what it might mean for global climate. The challenge of uh, methane as a contributor, a greenhouse gas contributor, both from anthropogenic sources, man-made sources and, and agriculture and oil and gas production, etc., cetera, um, and the concern that there's also a source of methane that, that's quite potent, that's coming out from natural uh, systems on the earth. And one of those is permafrost. Looking at the soil carbon pool, how much organic matter is locked away in the soil and as that thaws out, microbes can access it and release greenhouse gases. And there's large uncertainties, but we have some estimates. What we're talking about with sinkholes in Siberia, that's a whole different thing. That's not organic matter being converted to methane by microbes, that's methane itself out of uh, leaky coal beds or natural gas, um, oil associated reservoirs, sometimes just sedimentary basins trapped in or beneath permafrost that now has found a conduit or a chimney for escape. The changes in the permeability of the permafrost as it warms creates conduits or pathways. In permafrost regions, uh, it seems like permafrost was uh, uh, playing the role of this uh, uh, lead on, uh, on this process. And now this lead uh, start to get some, not, not uh, as strong as it was in the past and some holes penetrating this lead and, and gas escaping. So I think, I think that these methane mega seeps are a wild card. I think to say that we actually have to show that more of them are forming and that there's the potential for them to form faster. And logically that makes sense. If climate's warming and permafrost is becoming more permeable, um, we should see more of these chimneys open up. Like this new, uh, new craters in Siberia, which continue to uh, produce uh, or, or release methane, that's definitely new. Uh, they were not there even 10 years ago. There's some people who think it's going to take thousands of years to thaw permafrost enough to really release a lot of um, this geologic methane source. That's true, I would say, for a lot of it, but you don't have to thaw all of permafrost. You just have to turn it into Swiss cheese with holes going through it. <laughs> or just the permafrost itself becomes more transmissible for gas migration and even liquid water migration. And now you see the mysterious interior of the crater. The camera hanging on a rope passes down you know, the frozen walls. And finally, near the very bottom, at the depth about 70 meters from the surface, there is a crack. We believe that this was a probable pathway for methane release from natural gas storage reservoir. Here it is. The crater features are unstable. Already in a month it was half filled with water and thawed sediment. Next year it was already a lake, increasing in area every year in a row. All known gas emission craters are now lakes and can hardly be identified among other numerous tundra lakes. And by the time you take into account groundwater hydrology and surface hydrology, you get these connections of water flowing in the surface and subsurface, that can also really accelerate the formation of these of these chimneys. So I think there's a lot unknown. Um, the fact that we're recognizing that they exist, I think, gives us the responsibility to really look and say, are they new? Yes, we've newly recognized them, but are they new? Are they a new phenomenon? The urgency is that the permafrost I've described has warmed three degree, three times the pace of the global average in the last three decades. Then the question is, what's going to happen in the next three decades? That pace of warming 
is likely to accelerate. So these changes, these early indicators of change that we see in the permafrost could continue and be enhanced in the future.